Eight years. Eight years I've been waiting to make this video. Eight years ago. I had to stop watching after a couple of minutes. Why does he think the entire thing has to be a single, continuous vacuum chamber? My god, this moron gives skeptics and scientists a bad name. Eight years. Thunderfoot is a research chemist and has fallen into the annoying trap of thinking that makes him an expert on everything. The author might have some science experience, but it seems to lack even the most basic experience about engineering. The fact that his very first argument in the video is about volume and pressure suggests he is ignorant of the field, or stupid beyond imagination, and should abstain from making a complete fool of himself. People like Thunderfoot are the reason why America is stuck in the 90s, while China is making progress at alarming rates. You know all those engineers and scientists at Tesla and SpaceX who helped Elon write the white paper? As we said before, on page 54, section 4.5.2, it is written... The white paper, the white paper, all glory, glory to the white glory. paper. And the engineers and researchers on the various teams doing Hyperloop are like also legit scientists who went to school for years, right? The only difference is the SpaceX and Tesla teams have actually done something worthwhile with their time, as opposed to making YouTube videos about nothing. Hyperloop? Hyperloop? Why would you need a Hyperloop? We have airplanes and high-speed railway. Hyperloop. Pfft. This is just some far-out sci-fi stuff. It will never happen. This unrealistic transportation concept can easily be busted. It will never work. There are just too many problems with it. The entire Hyperloop could be destroyed in seconds. It will fail hard. It will fail so hard. Yep, it's one guy on the internet versus billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk and all of those engineers from Tesla and SpaceX. Guess how this story ends. What's that? The largest and best funded of the Hyperloop companies has just gone bankrupt with basically nothing to show for half a billion dollars. Oh, that's a shame. If only someone could have seen it coming, like um, six years ago or something. Hyperloop One has now pulled in almost $250 million, dwarfing Elon Musk's made $10 million track. This has got to be one of the biggest money-burning parties in history. 2016, the end of this year, we'll have demonstrated Hyperloop operating with all of its components. We'll have showed the world this isn't a pipe dream, this is actually reality. Hyperloop One designers say this technology could be ready to go by 2020. She said, this sounds like an impossible challenge, but you've never failed anything in your life, and if there's anything you can do, you could do this and you prove people wrong. And... So thank you all for the second. Woo! Hyperloop, you think maybe this is going to happen years from now? It's going to happen much quicker than anyone imagines. We haven't even started. Gosh, if only I'd made a prediction um, one or so years before they went bankrupt. A decade or so on, the most sophisticated Hyperloop company has just laid off half of its staff and announced that it's not planning to use the, uh, the Hyperloop to transport people. And they give it another you know, one or two years until they announce that they're not going to use it to transport cargo either. And one year later, guess what happened? It's dead. We got plenty of champagne and I only bought 45 cigars. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're expecting mercy here. Mercy is the mark of a great man. Oh. Oh. Guess I'm just a good man. Eight years of abuse. Sorry, all out of mercy. Oh, well, I'm all right. Shortly after I put my video up, some eight years ago, it had a 35% approval rating. Oh, 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 oh. So if you're expecting me to have a pity at this point. Eight years ago, 
everyone was raging about a brand new form of transport. But there's a lot going on in 2019. An amazing amount of stuff is actually happening on the Hyperloop front. Now there are two companies who are currently battling each other in the race to build the first commercial Hyperloop system. The first is Virgin Hyperloop 1. Hyperloop, a massive solar powered tube, would allow passengers to get from Los Angeles to San Francisco in less than 30 minutes. It's going to be able to reach, in theory, speeds of 700, maybe even 800 miles an hour. Just to get from LA to San Francisco in 35 minutes, there's, there's almost nothing else like that. MIT's motto is mind and hand, and Hyperloop really puts the mind and hand work together. Imagine if there were a way to travel as fast as a plane with the convenience of a metro. Imagine a ride as smooth as an elevator for the cost of a bus ticket. Let's stop imagining and build it together. Want to bring Hyperloop One to your country first? Enter our global challenge. Visit hyperloopchallenge.com for more info. Hi, I'm Steve Davis. I'm the director of advanced projects at SpaceX. Hyperloop is a point-to-point -point transportation system uh, overground that's meant to allow people to travel at extremely high speeds, up to uh, 700 miles an hour. The, uh, the idea originated from uh, Elon back in 2013. Literally, the only thing Musk did here was give a dumb old idea a new name. Musk no more invented the, uh, the Hyperloop than he did the tunnel or the wheel. And, and I'm thinking like maybe I should patent it and then offer to open source the patent to anyone that can make a credible case that they could actually do it. Um, Musk might as well have claimed here that he invented the wheel and was going to open source the patent. The entire contribution from the man who just reinvents worse copies of things that already exist or is giving it a new name. And if you think this is the only time Musk is confused giving something a new name with uh, inventing it, well, this is what he thought when he gave OpenAI 5% of its startup cash. So, and, right, and, so you uh, helped to the creation of OpenAI. You put yeah, in as so much as $50 million. More than helped. It wouldn't exist without it me. It wouldn't exist without you. So um, I came up with a name. Sorry? What? It wouldn't exist without it me. It wouldn't exist without you. So um, I came up with a name. <laughs> The just factually wrong claim that Musk invented the Hyperloop has now been repeated so many times that basically most people think that it's true. When it was first conceived by Elon Musk in 2013, the idea was deliberately open sourced. One of Musk's many successful companies has made the technology behind the Hyperloop open source so that other companies and institutions are welcome to develop and improve upon the Hyperloop idea. The Hyperloop concept was explicitly open sourced by Musk. Oh, wasn't that generous of uh, Elon Musk to uh, open source an idea that someone else came up with a hundred years before uh, he invented it? Back then, everyone basically just took everything Elon Musk said as 100% true. Founder Elon Musk wants to take people from New York to Washington, D.C. in less than half an hour. He tweeted, the government has given him verbal approval to build an underground hyperloop from New York to D.C. Elon Musk says a New York, D.C. hyperloop is coming. Elon Musk is the head of lots of companies. Everyone was raging about it, except for one lone guy on the internet who said it was all bullshit. Now, the sheer level of one man versus the world here, well, you kind of had to be there to appreciate it. The Hyperloop could generate more power than it consumes. Hyperloop has been touted as the fastest way to cross the surface of the Earth. It's also a lot faster. You can basically get from downtown LA to downtown San Francisco in 30 minutes. Slashing journey times between major cities from several hours to a matter of minutes. Three, two, one, fire goal to start constructing a track between two cities already in 2021. One of the nicest things about Hyperloop is that it is completely CO2 neutral. So no greenhouse gas emissions. And that's possible because those vehicles are traveling inside this vacuum tube. Going from New York to Washington DC or LA to San Francisco in less than an hour in one of these giant vacuum tubes. Oh man, this is a heavy door. Okay, so what if I told you that there was a mode of transportation that not only promised to leave planes, trains, and automobiles all in the dust, 
advancing the state of transportation, trying new things that have never been done before. Could be launched down the tube at near hypersonic speeds, then boosted by linear induction motors, essentially making the tube a big rail gun. Is this a safer way to get around? The system itself is 10 times safer than an airplane, for example. So many upcoming Hyperloop projects. Do you believe that Virgin Hyperloop 1 will be faster with their Indian Hyperloop track? Or will Hyperloop TT be faster with their Chicago Cleveland version? Hard to say, but probably they will be faster in India because the, those countries they just want to build stuff for prestige and they want to be as fast as possible to be the first one. But what exactly is this revolutionary Hyperloop? Hyperloop could see passengers traveling at over 700 miles an hour within floating, modern, and ultra-luxurious pods. What about us brain dead slobs? You'll be given cushy jobs. Not only is it lightning fast, but it's also quiet. I hear those things are awfully loud. It glides as softly as a cloud. Fast, relaxing, and luxurious? Damn, sign us up. <laughs> It's widely anticipated that Hyperloop fares will be very affordable, likely even cheaper than both train travel and air travel. What? Has stated that any money put into the mega project can be recouped in eight to 15 years from ticket sales. So ultimately, it's an investment. Envisioners are confident that Hyperloop will take the pressure off gridlocked roads. Monorail! <laughs> making travel between cities easier and potentially unlocking major economic benefits as a result. I've sold monorails to Brockway, Ogdenville, and North Haverbrook, and by gum it put them on the map. It's environmentally friendly, it's technologically revolutionary. There's nothing on earth like a genuine bona fide electrified six-car monorail. It's ambitious and it just might work. Over 10,000 travelers can fit on the system every hour. So we're planning to have the system available commercially in 2021 and that'll be the first time that people will be able to use the system and travel on it themselves. We get really, really lucky with a country, with a government, with regulators, and with financial backers that want to see this come into fruition. We'll let you punch that ticket in 2020. That's our goal. Three projects right. underway and the first production system by 2020. 2020, Rob, you and I have a date. It's set. From Los Angeles to San Francisco, and inside there would be capsule cars. Like a genuine bona fide electrified six car monorail. That would be rocketed forward up to 700 miles an hour. It is, it is for perfect travel for those trips. Listen to what he says for up to a thousand miles. Total bill, including capsule, would be between six and seven and a half billion dollars, about a tenth of the cost of the current plan. Main Street's still all cracked and broken. Sorry, Mom, the mod is spoken. He says it will only cost to build this six or seven billion dollars. Oh. Compare that to the 65 billion for the current high-speed rail plans for California. What else would make it so wonderful? It can never crash, is immune to weather, but can actually make it self-powering if you put solar panels on it. Musk wants to see this happen, not in the distant future, but now. So but the point about this is, could he do it? Let's not be down in the manger. Let's not be wet weekends about this. I know that there are various companies that are trying to create uh, the Hyperloop. And uh, honestly, I think it's a lot easier than, than people think. <laughs> but it's really not that hard. Now, no spoilers yet on how Elon did on this problem that was really not that hard. Like a tube with an air hockey table. It's really, I swear it's not that hard. <laughs> but I'll give you the teaser now. He makes the money burning party of the company that's just gone bankrupt, blowing half a billion dollars, look like an outrageous and productive use of money by comparison. If only there was some eight-year-old ask me anything about someone asking someone from that exact same company what they thought of my video. I have waited a long time for this moment. In particular, Thunderfoot doesn't seem to be aware that there's more than one Hyperloop company. FYI, we are Hyperloop One, the company that has raised about a hundred million dollars and built the world's most powerful linear motor in five months. Yeah, bragging about how they raised about a hundred million dollars. How'd that work out for you? Thunderfoot talks a good game about aerodynamics, but shows no evidence of having read the wiki article on choked flow, ducked flow, the Kantrowitz limit, or knowing any of the other first day on the job level details of our aero team. 
which is funny on so many levels, because here we are some eight years on and no Hyperloop system anywhere in the world, let alone Hyperloop one whose top of speed was like 100 miles an hour or something, have ever gone fast enough that any of these things that were their first day on the job level details have ever been a problem. One of Thunderfoot's technical gotchas was expansion joints are difficult, despite the fact that hydraulic cylinders exist. Most steel rails are thermally pretensioned, and thermal expansion is probably something we already thought of. Ah, notably not saying how you would address the problem of thermal expansion on a 600 odd kilometer cylinder. Because you know what? To this day, no one, no one has addressed the thermal expansion issue. I mean, he throws around some dumb red herrings about hydraulic cylinders. Well, okay, those run under very high pressure and are not 600 kilometers long. Then mentions steel rail, maybe not realizing that most of the weight of the tracks there is just to hold the tension in the rail. How exactly are you going to do that with a pipe? You know, you would need it tensioned on all of the parts of the outside of the pipe equally. Thunderfoot could have easily gone to our people on LinkedIn, checked out our Google Scholar bona fides, whatever, but seems to be more keen on a cheap takedown than actually engaging with interesting, ongoing engineering challenges. No, 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 no. I don't like my takedowns to be cheap. I like my takedowns to cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Burn! As a fellow academic, I was disappointed in Thunderfoot's lack of intellectual humility in an area he's obviously not an expert in. Look, you muppet, I didn't have to be an expert on any of this to realize it was stupid. One would wonder why Thunderfoot would put such hastily produced, easily debunked rubbish on his Patreon feed. Uh, yeah, just so we're clear, if it was so easy to debunk, why didn't you debunk any of it? Anyway, where were we? Uh, easily debunked rubbish on his Patreon feed. People actually pay for that. <laughs> oh, the sweet, juicy irony. The generosity of those people on Patreon allowed me to explain to you, not for tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, or for any of that. You got it for free. And thanks to them, he could explain to you why this was a dumb money burning party. And rather than taking that to heart, you decided, nah, where are the matches? How'd that work out for you? Now, nah, hold that thought. I'll tell you how it worked out for you. $500 million over some eight years is a cash burn rate of about $7,000 per hour. $7,000 per hour. TikTok for eight years straight with absolutely diddly squat to show for it. And you have the gall to go out there criticizing the financial wisdom, not of Hyperloop One, but of the people who supported this channel. I'm pretty sure that anyone who supported this channel some eight years ago not only found that video informative, but now gets the sweet, juicy entertainment of watching a smug, patronizing moron for the best part of 10 years ago getting served a giant heaping bowl of karma. And of course, watching their spirits break inside as they realize the money they burned ain't coming back. Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now. And maybe they should have listened to that guy some 10 years ago. Incidentally, that Ask Me Anything has got some complete howlers in it. Like someone asks, have you looked into the health effects of being regularly exposed to really strong magnets? What about those with pacemakers or metal in their body? To which Hyperloop One responds, have you considered the positive health effects? Uh, and literally, this is the link they share. To which someone replies, six years ago, yeah, want to buy some magic beans? In fact, who the hell is this guy? He's Casey, which is presumably this guy, the levitation engineer. And sure enough, a Google search later, you come up with this guy who is very proud that he was in a Veritasium video some six years ago. 
I wonder how this has aged. And it's being considered as a means to make the Hyperloop, a super fast system for transporting people and goods through tubes at very low pressure. In the future, do you think this is going to be how we travel? I think like ongoing developments in digital motor controllers and... Uh... It turns out that getting from one city to another city in the same day is something that the next billion or two billion people might have the opportunity to do in one lifetime. Hey, now if you're looking for a good book recommendation, uh, maybe you can try out the one I'm listening to right now, which is Elon Musk. This is a biography about one of the, in my view, most impressive entrepreneurs alive today. Yeah, and in 1920, Charles Ponzi was one of the most successful businessmen in the world. Anyway, back to Casey on Twitter. Turns out he's got some thoughts about the end of the Hyperloop there. Well, it's official. Hyperloop is finally dead. It was my first gig out of academia and an incredible venue to learn from some of the best engineers in the world to build an impossible thing. We got damn close. Actually, you got nowhere near. And we were not even talking in the same ballpark. We're talking like a guy throwing rocks and claiming he got close to landing on the moon. We also got to speedrun organizational drama, next to which Silicon Valley pales in comparison. I think it's unfortunate that very little of the inside story made it out. It was way weirder and more interesting than public reporting has ever hinted at. He's then asked, dead dead or is just hibernating and waiting for necessary tech breakthroughs? Yeah, like there are tech breakthroughs in making a big metal tube. To which Casey, Hamdmer PhD replies, it turns out it's a terrible idea for the extremely subtle reasons that high-speed rail is a terrible idea. So dead, dead. He's then asked, would it have worked if it was all above ground, i.e. no digging? To which he replies, no, earth is too bumpy. Well, $500 million of PhD research well spent there then. Basically, this is the problem that he's alluding to. The UK is currently in the middle of a farce of building an extremely small and limited high-speed rail line called HS2 over the relatively flat lands between London and Birmingham, which involves the construction of 32 miles of tunnels, 140 bridges, 50 viaducts, 70 cuttings, and 110 embankments. Even assuming you could build a Hyperloop, the Hyperloop would travel faster, so it would require even more of these things. And gosh, somehow Casey was able to come to these incredibly profound Hyperloop killing ideas, despite not being an expert in geology or infrastructure construction and was able to pass opinions on a field which he has clearly no professional training. But hang on, I'm getting mixed messages here. According to Casey, merely a few comments earlier, he was saying they got damn close to making the impossible happen. And yet here he is a few comments later saying the idea is fundamentally flawed and can never happen. Because Earth bumpy. Oh, if only someone could have seen it coming. Just so you know, Hyperloop One was invested in by the Virgin Group and became Virgin Hyperloop One. Virgin um, has gone into the Hyperloop business um, and we've invested in the company that is in uh, the lead as far as developing Hyperloop, which will now be called Virgin Hyperloop. Uh, it'll be a train that um, goes into a tunnel uh, that levitates mag on, on magnetic levitation. Um, and will travel at speeds of uh, over 600 miles an hour. I was completely blown away. I mean, I think... I too was blown away by this um, six years ago because it seemed they didn't have the slightest clue of what they'd actually invested in and thought it was some sort of magical device that was going to be physical broadband. Think about broadband. At the heart of it is a network that has digital packets that go very fast. Three types of packets, data, voice, and video. And again, the internet is not something that you just dump something on. It's not a big truck. It's, it's a series of tubes. Think about Hyperloop. At the heart of it is a network with three types of physical packets. Packets of people, packets of freight, packets of car. 
that can all go on a very fast pipe or con connection that can go first mile to last mile in an autonomous way. We believe it's the emergence of physical broadband. And after a few years of selling it as the next amazing best thing, they are... Uh... So one, when you get onto a Hyperloop system, what we don't want you to do is feel as if you're just on any other mass transit system, because you're not. So what we are trying to do is just reinvent travel, the travel experience. Yes! Decided that no, take our name off this and never mention us again. Now about three years before they went bankrupt, they announced they were building a test center. And I made a video explaining why that was all bullshit. Which is funny, because from the very start, even Casey with his PhD in magnets could have explained to them why this was the dumbest decision ever. It's also a fascinating glimpse into how people get sucked into these cultish beliefs and it's almost painful to watch now. Bear in mind, this was all born out of a simple Musk lie that he invented a brand new form of transport, when in reality the most simple fact checking showed they'd done nothing more than give a new name to a dumb old idea. And to see how this evolved and grew into a company backed by politicians, university presidents, billionaire businessmen, and the US government thinking that their belief in a magical solution will revolutionize everything, to the point where they're happy to gurgle half a billion dollars into it. I mean, when I put this video up, it was just a prediction that this was a dumb money-burning party. And now that you know the outcome, watching the procession of academics and political lemmings marching off the cliffs of stupidity is almost beguiling to watch. Billionaire Richard Branson on Thursday announced that the state of West Virginia has been chosen to host a $500 million certification center. No! Oh, please, God, no! A $500 million... No! $500 million... I'm only burning my half. And test track for the Virgin Hyperloop. Hyperloop moves people and goods in pods through a vacuum tube at speeds exceeding 600 miles per hour and can travel from Pittsburgh to Chicago in 41 minutes. A super high speed travel system. The center will be the first U.S. regulatory proving ground for a Hyperloop system designed to whisk floating pods packed with passengers and cargo through vacuum tubes at 600 miles an hour. Hyperloop will build its new certification center on nearly 800 acres of land across Tucker and Grant counties. The company also says it will use intellectual capital and resources from West Virginia University, Marshall University, and from across the state. Hello, I'm Congressman Alex Mooney. I'm very pleased West Virginia will be home to the Hyperloop Certification Center. This comes after a competitive national site selection process. There is no better place than West Virginia for high-tech, innovative transportation solutions. Construction is set to begin in 2022 on the site of a former coal mine in West Virginia. Virgin Hyperloop, which has raised more than $400 million, is among a number of firms racing to launch new high-speed travel systems. And I'm sure you'll be stunned to find out that they're actually building the Hyperloop Center in probably one of the worst possible places that you could build it in America. There is no better place than West Virginia for high-tech, innovative transportation solutions. But hey, let's make this sporting. Let's see if you can pinpoint the exact moment where he proposes what obviously makes West Virginia one of the dumbest places in the country to build a hyperloop. American-made technology will be, will be produced right here in West Virginia. Our mountain state can boast of technology, innovation, and the 21st century transportation solutions, all to keep America strong and prosperous. And he wasn't alone in boasting about building a, a test center for a high-speed rail network in probably one of the worst places to build it. Well, thank you, Senator. This is an incredible day for West Virginia. Indeed, it is an incredible day for the world. Uh, Vision and technology that our friends at Virgin Hyperloop are developing will benefit us on a global scale. And how wonderful it is that the Mountain State will share in its evolution. 
And for those who missed it, our mountain state can boast. And how wonderful it is that the mountain state will share in its evolution. Yeah, it's hard enough to build rail lines through mountainous terrain. Even roads can be a challenge. <laughs> you know what no sane man has ever thought? Mountainous terrain. Now that's the place to build my new certification center for a high-speed rail network. A point that um, you would have thought that one of their PhD researchers who was really, really close to making this happen might have pointed out to them. Yeah, I mean, it, your state competed with 17 other states. Um, you put your, your more than your best foot forward, um, you know, to, to try to sort of build a really a fantastic innovation center in, in your state. You know, it could make a big difference for the future. Congratulations on the selection of Tucker County, West Virginia, as a location of the new Hyperloop Certification Center. This is a testament to the hard work of Governor Justice, Senators Capitol and Manchin, and others in West Virginia's government, business, and academic community. And yes, even back then, I went through and explained to them in non-technical jargon why they were building it in the dumbest place in the world. Thankfully, America is well set up for flat states, as can be easily spotted by the rather straight interstates going through North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Kansas. Of the worst places that you could possibly build a Hyperloop would be, say, for instance, in the Rocky Mountains. And yeah, I go on to explain how they built their uh, prototype in the dumbest place possible, and how now they're proposing building their uh, test center in the second dumbest place possible. That is almost the worst place that you can possibly think to build a Hyperloop track. And that's exactly where they chose to build their Hyperloop test track. And watching the morons marching after the man with no clothes on was just amazing. And they were saying how this was gonna change everything. It was gonna be as big as landing on the moon. And you'll be saying, no, 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 it can't be that stupid. I mean, next you'll be telling me it was a university president who said that. I mean, come on. It is truly a wonderful day for West Virginia, our nation, and the world. Marshall University is honored to be a part of this global announcement. It's so exciting to be here today, not just to help Hyperloop develop and test this technology and to celebrate the economic benefits to the state, but to also realize that we are at the gates of history. And so we want to couple this with our tourism industry, our e educational um, institutions, the research and development that comes with the technology to create a whole new way to travel in this country. My name is David McKinley, uh, and my congressional district includes Tucker and Grant County, the new home to the Virgin Hyperloop Certification Center. It's a future, it's a vision, and that's what uh, the Virgin Hyperloop folks have done by choosing to build the Hyperloop uh, Certification Center in Tucker and Grant County. Well, um, the Hyperloop Certification Center um, will be in the state of West Virginia. Um, and But today, today is a day to celebrate Virgin Hyperloop coming to West Virginia. It is validation for West Virginia in so many ways. It is a dream. I'm Governor Jim Justice. You know, it is an incredible day for West Virginia. And I say to all my team and all those that put in all the licks to make this happen, we did it. We did it. And so we're honored beyond belief. We're proud beyond belief. We welcome Hyperloop to West Virginia, to Grant and Tucker County. Absolutely, we welcome them with the, the most open arms and we're so proud of this great, great day, not only for West Virginia, but for our nation and for the world. It's also very humbling for me because you took a risk on our state, my home state. Uh, it's something that I think can result in inclusive jobs, can really give the state momentum to become a startup state in so many ways. And Hyperloop represents that dream for us in so many different aspects. A vision of a system that will do that without polluting the air. I hear those things are awfully loud. It glides as softly as a cloud. The HCC will create thousands of new jobs in West Virginia. Engineering, manufacturing, operation, and maintenance jobs will all boost the local economy 
here in West Virginia. I am so excited to welcome Virgin Hyperloop to West Virginia. This partnership will have an incredible impact on our economy, creating modern jobs in everything from construction and infrastructure to technology and development. What about us brain dead slobs? You'll be given cushy jobs. We're going to create literally thousands of jobs and thousands upon thousands of opportunities for West Virginia. Throw up your hands and raise your voice. What's it called? I believe this project is to ground transportation as the moon mining is to space exploration. Once again. We'll bring West Virginia to the cutting edge of transportation solutions and create American technology that we can export throughout the world. Virgin Hyperloop, welcome to West Virginia. And if you think this is the death of the monorail, sorry, Hyperloop, just because one $500 million company bought the big one, regret to inform you, Hyperloop is no longer an idea. It's a religion, a big, shiny, red, computer-generated mystery box. Or you can trade it all in for what's in this box. The box, the box. That will magically solve all transport problems. I mean, why bother fixing those dirty holes on Main Street? That's, that's an old technology. We could have something shiny and new. He's a good sign. Hopefully high-speed rail is completely bypassed. And we will see the Hyperloop become the long-distance travel mode of choice, connecting all U.S. major cities in the future. You can have the boat or the mystery box. What, are you crazy? We'll take the boat. No, no, not so fast, Lois. Something forged by the genius, big-brained, revolutionary mind of the entrepreneur and billionaire techno-ponzi Rocket Jesus himself, and passed down to us mere mortals by the revealed the truth of the holy the white, white paper. paper, revered by university presidents and billionaire businessmen alike. I mean, how could you not believe in it? Hell, remember this guy's Twitter feed? Well, a guy pops up in there saying how Musk has made tunneling 30 times cheaper, which is just simply not true. But even if it were, the guy's taken some five years to dig a few miles of tunnel under Las Vegas, which can really take slow-moving cars. And apparently, the Las Vegas Boring Company tunnel is a done deal now. And it will shoot people from station to station at the Las Vegas Convention Center with speeds of up to 150 miles per hour. Yeah, they didn't deliver 150 miles an hour in the end. They delivered more like 30, 35 ish, maybe. And even at that, after a few years of intermittent use. Um, apparently, the loop hadn't been active for about three weeks, so this is them getting back in the swing of things. Right. It's only open when there's like stuff going on, right? Correct. Yeah. And even at that, it's already a conspicuously bumpy ride, even at 30 miles per hour. Not very smooth. <laughs> it's like a road. I wonder how many years it'll take to get repaid. Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> and even at that, Musk has only been digging these tunnels at the rate of about one mile per year. And at about a mile per year for tunnels like this, that means that for the Hyperloop, you will be looking at construction times of hundreds of years just for the tunneling. In fact, maybe now is a good time to reflect on what happened to Elon Musk's amazing Hyperloop. Not the Washington to Baltimore one, of course, because that was pure vaporware and was never mentioned again. But what about the test track? Uh, and not blowing up SpaceX's $12.5 million tubes. The $12.5 million tube was um, built to similar standards to their tunnel, used for a couple of deeply unconvincing uh, competitions. One of the wonderful events that, that Elon uh, puts on at, at SpaceX and the Boring Company is a, a Hyperloop competition, which uh, we do every year. And uh, the first year, um, actually, this is, this is true, over a thousand universities worldwide entered, which was amazing. And then we narrowed it down to 20, and then 20 came and actually competed at SpaceX.
which got nowhere near the speed of, say, a high-speed rail, before Musk promised a even bigger tube. So our good Elon announced that SpaceX would build an even longer test track, a 6.2 mile or 10 kilometer long test tube. But to make it more realistic, this time even with a curve. And the coolest thing, it will be ready for the next Hyperloop competition in 2020. We're really looking forward to it. And you'll be shocked. Shocked to find out that there wasn't a longer Hyperloop test track in 2020, or 2021, 2022, 2023, and there's no sign that it'll ever be built in 2024. Instead of rather than building a bigger tube, they took their existing tube and cut it in half to make way for a functioning form of transport, a train, before just cutting the entire Hyperloop up, which was presumably by then a rusted eyesore, and took it away as scrap metal. But it's really not that hard. It still sounds pretty complicated, Elon. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's really... I swear it's not that hard. Seems like the people crying debunked are assuming that all of the scientists and engineers at SpaceX and all these universities haven't taken a grade 11 physics course. <laughs> yeah, I think that's Elon Musk, the uh, world's richest man. Uh, all those SpaceX engineers, a company burning half a billion dollars of cash and a thousand universities zero. Some random guy on the internet, one. Look. I showed these people years ago that what they were doing was stupid, and they insisted on burning their money anyway. I could today make the same video about a dozen other ongoing Hyperloop projects around the world. We believe in the Hyperloop uh, development and we believe that it will run around Europe and around the world. This first new step of the European Hyperloop Centre is the start of a really big thing for Hyperloop. I think the Hyperloop is a great solution for our mobility challenges of the, of the future. I think it's a great chance for collaboration. For me, it's very important to um, collaborate and work together with all the Hyperloop companies. But I guess don't expect a lot of these people to change their mind just because one of the religions has failed. There will still be plenty of true believers who won't give up until their money runs out. However, businesses do not function on belief, but the bottom line. And sooner or later, those financial lemmings will meet the cliffs of stupidity. And sooner or later, those lemmings will look at the guy holding up the sign saying jumping off the cliffs of stupidity is bad. And the pile of dead lemmings at the bottom of the cliff holding signs saying, uh, no, jumping off the cliffs of stupidity will revolutionize transport forever. And just might start paying attention. Then sure, videos like this are starting to help. And they're even starting to bite on things like Wikipedia. So now the Hyperloop article is updated to say the article may be written from a fan's point of view rather than a neutral point of view. And the article contains writing like an advertisement. And that is an eight-year recap of $500 million of stupidity. I believe this project is to ground transportation as the moon mining is to space exploration. <sighs> but if you appreciated the recap, maybe drop a thumbs up on it. And if you really like the work of this channel, you can support it directly through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.